another one with lots of different points. Um, I got my golden ticket. I got my vaccination voucher. Uh, I was in one of the, the many wards in Tokyo that uh, didn't issue vouchers to people under 65 early because they figured, what's the point? They're not going to be able to give them vaccinations until like later on in the year. And then the government said, hey, everybody, uh, we want you, if elderly people are not coming to their reservations, give it to young people. And so all of a sudden, half of the prefectures, which were told by the government that they wouldn't have supplies to give for months and months, were told, hey, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you given vouchers to everybody? And suddenly everyone was complaining to these governments. So they were feeling very thrown under the bus by the national government. And they, they scrambled to get out vouchers, and I just caught mine. The point being that with the voucher, with the number on it, then they can track if I get my uh, vaccination either in my local ward or I at one of the national facilities like the, the uh, self-defense force or Tokyo prefecture run for mass vaccination facilities. So um, that would have been good news. Um, I mean, it is good news. Of course, I could have gotten my shot at work, but a few things have happened this week. Um, first of all, I mean, the week I suppose started good uh, in a way, the, the Taro Kono, the minister in charge of regulatory reform and handing out the vaccinations, who's clearly been told get as many people vaccinated as possible before the election because, you know, it, it's mainly the performance on COVID-19 and vaccinations that were hurting the LDP. So basically, he turned all the taps and said, OK, any company that wants to vaccinate its employees, just tell us, we'll give you all the vaccinations you need. And they told all the local governments, hey, forget about doing it in order with elderly people first, whatever, just just do everybody, we'll give you all the vaccines. And that resulted in this enormous jump that you can see for, for Japan there. Um, this is the number of vaccines administered over seven days. Of course, Japan low for a very long time and suddenly very high. So it looked like it was good. And in fact, it was going so good that uh, Taro Kono, um, who likes to be called Koro, uh, Kono Taro, uh, Japan versus Europe lately, basically saying suck at Germany. Um, that's more or less what he was doing. He was uh, doing the victory dance and, uh, you know, spiking the ball and doing all of that, saying, hey, everyone's saying that those European countries are doing better than us. How do you like me now? Um, and, and all of that. However, I mean, of course, doing the victory dance on pure raw numbers of vaccinations when, of course, Japan has like double the population of most of the countries that are on that list to begin with. But in any, I mean, you know, very, very good. Of course, nothing like the coverage of the percentage of the population vaccinated or uh, the, the number of vaccinations per population or anything like that. But raw numbers, yeah, Japan has caught up and he took a bit of a victory dance. However, after taking the victory dance, the, like the next day, he said, yeah, about those vaccines that we told all the companies and the local governments that you can accelerate because we have all the stock, we've got you covered, you can just go ahead. We think we're only actually going to be able to supply you about a third of what you've requested from us. So you should just like cancel all of those uh, accelerated vaccinations now um, because we won't be able to deliver them to you which resulted in um, places like my company cancelling my shot, uh, which was scheduled for next week. Um, and a lot of local governments, uh, a lot of people talking about where, particularly people who are under 65, who are able to like schedule, um, you know, advanced vaccinations to finding out that their vaccinations have been cancelled. Worse, many people who got their first vaccination have had their second vaccinations cancelled because the supplies that were expected to come in that he said were coming have been cancelled. Um, the problem is not one of supply, it seems. They're still adamant that there is enough supply of Moderna and Pfizer within Japan to, to vaccinate the entire population. The problem is, is apparently distribution is just uh, not keeping up with the sudden demand. The rush to sort of go and accelerate like that basically meant that uh, they can't sustain that level of supply from the central government and the failed at that. So he's come out and basically now everybody's getting their vaccinations cancelled and people are worried that they're not going to get their vaccinations at the right like duration after the first one. And now everyone's back to being very, very angry. So yeah, I got my golden ticket and that's good. Um, but honestly, well, look, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not... Um, I know I'm probably going to get a vaccination. I mean, I've got multiple options. I'm keen to get it. I, I work at home during the day, so I, I can probably, if there's somewhere nearby, I can go and be on standby somewhere. I can, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it in the next couple of months. Um, and, and so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. But of course, yeah, he, he went from bragging to suddenly like cancelling two thirds of the scheduled uh, vaccinations for people under 65. So in terms of like making the national government look good, where this is really the most sensitive issue right now, this is not so good. Um, this is this is making promises, frankly, that they couldn't really back up, and probably that 
it always looks like it's dipping down because it takes a few days for the for the data to catch up but uh, it, it may very well dip down as a result of that so that's one thing that's happening with vaccinations the other thing that's happening with vaccinations is i i mentioned last week how um vaccinations are being rolled out but very much there's there is not uh there's very much a, a, a messaging that this is voluntary um and that particularly that we shouldn't use vaccinations as an excuse to bully people for example at schools or in workplaces who don't get vaccinated kind of different to what you, the tone you're hearing in the u.s where people are obsessed about getting to the 70 percent herd immunity and incentivizing and hearing about hospitals firing nurses because they they didn't get shots and stuff like that um, you know, and, and the, the talking about vaccine passports coming out, a lot of moves to sort of really force and coerce people to get vaccines, uh, unless there's a really good reason not to. In Japan, the voluntary nature of it is still being emphasized. And that's probably partly because they want to make sure that they can get it rolled out, you know, to, to as many people who want it first, and they can worry, see how far they get and worry about pushing it later on. Um, but the problem with that strategy is case in point here there's a hospital in okinawa the okinawa chubu hospital uh, where there was a cluster um, of something like 50 people which resulted in 17 deaths among those uh, 50 people in this cluster at this hospital uh, were 12 nurses the hospital apparently had 15 nurses and 12 of them uh, decided they didn't want to get vaccinated they they for what not clear why, uh, but they just voluntarily opted not to be vaccinated. Uh, all of them got coronavirus, and the cluster resulted in 17 people dying. Of course, Okinawa has a large elderly population that probably have more of a propensity to visit the hospital regularly. Um, but yeah, so now the question starting to come up nationwide as to um, whether um, vaccines should be required for hospitals you know again there's no examples in japan of that kind of coercion like it's sort of taken for granted in other countries to me it, it, it's a little bit like i mean being a medical worker treating people uh, like without i kind of get it where vaccines weren't available up until now and people had to take precautions but if vaccines are available and you're not taking it and you're working with patients who have it and with patients who don't have it you know the given the odds that you could be giving it to other people and you had the chance to protect those patients and you didn't take it and you know probably didn't inform them about that strikes me as not being um, you know there, there are parallels to the, to the idea of people who maliciously in the 80s were spreading hiv um, not telling people their status and having unprotected sex deliberately you know back when everyone thought it was a fatal disease and some people went crazy thinking well i'm going to take a bunch of people with me not not quite as as uh, you know but there were people that were charged with manslaughter for that sort of thing back at that time and i i don't know certainly when a hospital allows 12 nurses to turn down vaccine the, you know the chance to be vaccinated and to continue working and those people give it to people 17 of whom die um yeah there, there's problems there and there are questions coming up as to what can should hospitals make it mandatory for staff to be vaccinated in order to work at hospitals um, I don't like there being too much coercion around this stuff, but there again, it shouldn't be necessary. The idea that medical workers would turn it down if it's on offer in the first place seems kind of crazy to me. And, and if you have too many cases like this where unvaccinated medical workers are causing people to die, you have to say, is it safe to have them working in hospitals? And how liable is the hospital and how liable are the medical workers? Uh, fortunately, again, Japan is not like other countries with lawsuits for you know falling off ladders or anything like that. But, you know, there is a thing if I if I had a family member at a hospital for, you know, a, a scrape or something minor and they, they got coronavirus from a nurse and they died, you know, you'd think at least the nurses should be safe or should be vaccinated. So, yeah, that's triggering uh, some discussion, which hasn't really been visible in Japan until now. Uh, another thing that was interesting, uh, a lot of something like 11 percent of the population on a recent nhk survey said that they will not get vaccinated like they affirmatively believe in anti-vaccine theories and do not trust it and do not want to get it 56 percent of people said wait and see so also kind of hesitant but not like anti-vax but 11 percent of people are like no uh, that's going to give me 5g and uh you know microchips and bill gates and everything like so um NHK recognizing the increasing prevalence of belief in conspiracy theories and urban myths around the, the, the vaccine actually put up a special the other day, uh, specifically addressing uh, a, a lot of 
you could say urban myths or conspiracy theories going around and, and pointing out that they are popular on uh, SNS, but they have no scientific basis whatsoever, and they're actually harmful and dangerous things to believe uh, and to stop people who you know are, are spreading these. And um, specifically, they call out the idea that the vaccine causes miscarriages. Um, myths, uh, urban myths that they uh, can impact uh, pregnancies, the idea that they can affect uh, male or female um, uh, fertility, um, and the risk of believing uh, too much crap that you read online. Uh, ain't that the truth? So anyway, it's good to see an HK not just being passive about uh, this sort of thing and starting to go on the initiative and actually call out uh, people that are spreading lies, uh, you know, in order to scare people. And I suppose the, the other problem is a lot of people read the summer and believe it, and then they spread it thinking that they're doing it to help people. I'm sure that's the case, actually, most of the time. But again, it, when, when it's actually, you know, unscientific information and it actually causes public health risk, um, this is sort of, you know, the result of that. Um, the other thing, interestingly, of course, is that Japan is going to start issuing vaccine passports. There'll be paper documents, uh, certifications of having been vaccinated from uh, July. Uh, interestingly as well, the EU is actually starting a digital vaccine passport. So what looks like very likely to happen is that countries like um, Japan and Europe and so on are probably going to use digital versions of these passports to um, basically allow travel um, exceptions to right now the, to, to the quarantine and the travel restrictions. It's likely that uh, vaccination is going to get you um, a fast track around that which to me does make sense. There's a question as to what Japan is going to do in the case of uh, countries that use vaccines that Japan doesn't recognize, like the Russian Sputnik vaccine and the Sinovac vaccine, and so, very popular in Southeast Asia. Some Eastern European countries, of course, in the EU, like Hungary, I believe, have been using the Sputnik um, vac vaccine. So some questions about that. But I, 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 again, uh, it's really about reciprocity and, and agreeing mutual standards. So that is likely to come into effect. And, you know, th th taking it to this, the extreme, countries like Israel, of course, use vaccine passports for things like being able to get into restaurants and movie theaters. Um, I know a lot of people don't like that. It sounds a little bit too fascist uh, to a lot of people. But at the same time, if it's public health and safety, um, and and as this article goes into, there are plenty, plenty of precedents already for entering different countries and places that you are uh, required to have different sorts of vaccinations already. So it looks like this is a thing, and certainly given that Japan is not coercing, uh, it's not making you know vaccinations mandatory for anyone, I think, I think having a positive incentive to do it, um, other than like lottery tickets and guns and ammo and you know hamburgers and stuff like that, uh, actually being allowed to travel to see your family, that's a pretty good incentive anyway. So there's a question about whether how, how they're going to accommodate people who um, are at heightened risk, like sensitive with allergies and so on, and can't get the shots. But I think it is the right thing to do, and it's it's not a right, right? It's it's a privilege that's you know being extended with it, with still the default being until this thing is gone, and it might never be gone. Um, to to basically you know have a certification that someone's safe. Um, AV eighty four K. Since I have the golden ticket, will Willy Wonka give me the vaccine? Hey, I'll take. <laughs> I hope so. It'd be cool if they could actually get it into chocolate. I've heard that Pfizer is working on getting in a tablet form, um, preferable to a shot. Not that I really care either way, but uh, but yes, indeed. Lots of comments actually. Uh, I'm gonna go back up here. I see that uh, I, I miss Christopher Luke. Good to see you. Not a good great time to be in hospital. No, especially not in Okinawa by the sounds. But it's a reminder as well that although medical workers have all had access to the vaccine now, a lot of medical workers are still deciding not to take it, and you don't know if they did or not. So you know, um, which isn't how it should be, right? You should, you, if there's one place you should feel safe, it should be at least with medical workers, you know. So yeah, indeed, that's very, very concerning. Hope So Dan H, uh, what's the wait time between jabs in Japan? It's eight to 11 weeks in the UK. Is that right? It, I understand that the, well, again, I don't know what it is for AstraZeneca, but the two shots on offer here in Japan are, of course, Pfizer and Moderna. And the recommended, at the moment, the recommended periods, I believe, are three weeks for Pfizer and uh, four weeks for Moderna, although, of course, there's the information coming out of Europe and America, which are further along with this, saying that actually um, the longer you wait, possibly the more impactful, the, the more the benefit of the um, vaccine is. So maybe it's not so bad if you have to wait, you know, five or six or seven weeks instead of four weeks. Um, I was scheduled for a Moderna one, but it got cancelled. So we'll see what, what happens with that. I'll take either one. They're both 
pretty highly effective by the sounds of it. Um, the other thing that is interesting, of, of course, is uh, some studies saying that getting the Pfizer for one and AstraZeneca for the other, or you know, getting like mixing up the vaccine, the vaccines somehow apparently produces a stronger immune res response. Um, again, you know, it's all kind of we're trying to figure it out all out at the moment. But yeah, the standard periods are three or four weeks right now in Japan. Still not.